Hi guys, I'm Gage and welcome to episode two of the coding series, building your own Amazon app using the Amazon API. So in the last episode, we managed to retrieve the orders from our accounts. And now we're gonna try and do something with that data. So someone actually commented on the last video, editor, bring up his comment right here. Uh, he said, I wanna see something where you can get the profit and sales and profit margin of your products. So we're gonna do exactly that. I think his name was Billy Bob. So shout out to Billy Bob, we're gonna do that. Comment what you wanna see next time, I might just do it. So uh, here is our code from last time. Let's lay out some objectives of what we want to achieve this video. So probably uh, iterate through the orders, calculate the sales from the orders, sales, profit, ROI, units, and orders. So to do that, we're going to need a few different things, but we will get to that as we go so firstly let's make a function called get values we'll call it and then we need to load in our data from our orders.json file so we'll do orders is equal to open json orders equals json.load orders so we're just loading it in as a json object and uh, that's done so now we can do for order in orders so what this does is it just iterates through each of our orders in this JSON file and goes through uh, the values for each of them. So because this is a US account, uh, we can see the currency is USD here. Sometimes I sell in Mexico and Canada and we're not gonna count those orders because that will involve some sort of currency conversion. You could do that if you wanted, but for the simplicity of the video, we're not gonna do that. So our first if statement is if order currency Uh, is equal to USD, then it's going to proceed. And then we want one more here. If the order status is shipped, then we want to do this. So we're only going to count shipped orders. If you want to include pending as well, all you need to do is just do and order status pending. Uh, so now let's do, let's declare some variables. So skew would be order skew. And again, that's just the skew from here. Uh, we probably also want the order price which would just be uh, the float of order price. We also want the quantity. Quantity is int of quantity. Won't need the title for now, but we'll probably want the ASIN. So we'll do ASIN. Cool, so now we have those variables attached. We probably want to declare some of the variables that we're going to calculate now. So let's do total sales. Let's do total profits, uh, total units, total orders, and ROI. Cool, so now we can proceed from here. So to work out total sales, it's just simply plus equals uh, the order price. So the order price is the total cost of the order. So if this unit, if this order is $53 and there's only one, that means the unit price is $53. But if the price was 106 and the quantity was two, then the unit price is 53. Uh, so the total sales is just that plus the order price. Then we can do total units is just this itself plus quantity. And total orders is just plus one for every order we go through. So we'll start with that and then we will just print the uh, values afterwards just to check that it's working. So we'll just run this function now and we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed it works. Ah, so I've actually just printed off uh, one of them here because of the position of my print statements, but uh, we've got the ASIN, the quantity of this order, this uh, Jonestown order, and the order price and the SKU. So if I just print total profits, total sales, total units, total orders. And I run this. We've got zero pounds total profit because we haven't actually changed anything yet. Uh, 764 in total sales, 17 units and 17 orders for uh, the specific day that we're looking at here, which is the 30th of January. Awesome. So now we need to work out the total profit and the ROI. So the way we need to do that is work out the fee values 
for the orders because obviously our cost of goods minus what we sold it for is not the profit because we're paying Amazon fees. Uh, we will get our cost of good first. We actually need a total cogs value here to be able to work out the ROI. So we'll set that to zero. So our cog is the skew split by a dash and it's the first value. So what I mean by that is if we look at my custom skew here, we can see I've got the place I bought it from, the price I bought it for, and then the date, uh, all separated by a dash. So what this dash, what this split command is doing is it's splitting the, the skew string into multiple parts and we're just using the first part, which is here. This would be zero part, this is the first part, this is the second part. Now we have the cog, uh, we can do total cogs uh, plus itself for the cog we also need to times this by the quantity, actually, because if we sold multiple units, then we need to take that account for the total cogs. Yes, cool. So now we need to get the fees. So I already have the fee code saved here and I'll just explain it. So uh, what this function does is it takes an ASIN and a price and it does the product fees uh, API command. So the way we get that here is just by adding product fees to uh, our import of the seller API here. And then we can use the product fees command with our credentials and marketplace, just like we do with our get orders. Uh, and we can use the get product fees estimate for ASIN with the ASIN and the price, set our currency, if it's FBA true, if it's FBM, then you wanna set that as false. And then we just take the payload of the fee estimate, the fee estimate, total fees and amount, and that is the total fees. Now, the reason I've got this in a try is that sometimes we're gonna be requesting too many fees in one time and there's a limit of, I think, one a second. So if there is a exception, so it doesn't get the total fees, then what we're gonna do is just run this again with a two second delay. So then it's had enough time to uh, adjust to the uh, API limits. Cool, so that's gonna return the total fees. So we can do total fees is equal to get fees ASIN order price, which we already have here. So now we have the total fees, we need to work up profit per unit. Uh, and that is slightly complicated. I've got the calculation here. Uh, so the profit is very complicated because of that. So you'll wanna set your VAT rate up here. So if you're 20% VAT, just put this to 20 and this calculation will work. But essentially, this is the calculation for working the VAT exclusive price and then the sale price with VAT included minus the total fees. And that will give you the profit. Uh, in this case, we're selling in the US, so our VAT is zero. So now we have the profit. Uh, we need to do total profit is plus itself times profit times by quantity. So the reason we need to do quantity is we've worked out the profit based on the, oh, we need to work out the unit price, which is unit price is the uh, order price divided by quantity. I should do that line below so we're not declaring it twice. Uh, unit price is order price divided by quantity. And we're working out the fees based on the unit price, not the total order price. Uh, so now we get the profit per unit because we're using the unit price and then we need to times it by the quantity to get our total profit. Uh, and then we add that to the initial total profit value. So now we have the total sales, the total profit, the total units, the total orders uh, and total cogs. We just need to work out the ROI. So how we do that is outside of our four function, we wanna do this at the end. We can just do ROI is equal to the total profit divided by the total cost of goods times by 100. And then at the end, we will return, uh, we'll return the total cogs, total sales, total profit, total units, total ROI. We'll assign that to the function here and then we'll print all of this nicely for us. 
uh, we I think we'll want to make all of these strings because we are using concatenation here and then our ROI we want to stick a percentage at the end after okay cool okay so now we're going to try it and see if it works fingers crossed so I'm running it we are getting fees for each of the units so you can see sometimes there's a little bit of delay between the getting fees prints uh, and that's because of the rate limit that Amazon implement. So we can see here our total cost of goods for that day, 513 and 15 cents. Our total sales, 764. Our total profit was 60, unit 17, total order 17 and our ROI for that day was a poor 11.74%. And that is it. So we've worked out using iteration through our data all of these values and we can do that for whatever day that we want so i think in the next episode we can use that data and maybe try and display that on the web but if anyone has any suggestions or anything you want to see let's do it